What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to take our calculator and turn it into a standalone executable file with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to turn our calculator app into a standalone exe file for Windows and Mac. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so in the last few videos, we've been building out this simple calculator app. In this video, we want to sort of package it all up into a standalone executable file for Windows and Mac. Now, I know a lot of you guys wanna do this for Android, and we'll talk about that later. In this video, we're gonna look at Windows and Mac, sort of the first step. So there's a way to package all of this into one exe file. We're not gonna look at that in this video. It's a little bit more complicated. We may look at that later. In this video, we're just gonna create a, a, the big package. It's gonna have many files. We're gonna zip it all up into one file that you can then share with people or whatever, uh, and that's sort of the basic way to do it. So. Go ahead and close this. Now we're not actually going to make any changes to our code so far, except I'm going to move it from the current directory into another directory just to separate it from all the other stuff we've been working on up until now. So I'm going to pull up a file explorer and I'm just going to go to our C drive and then find the directory we've been working in, Kivi GUI. And you can see here is calc.kv and calc.py. I'm just going to right click. I'm going to highlight them both, right click and click copy. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm gonna create a new folder, and let's just call this calc, or calc, eh, calc is fine. So it really doesn't matter what it's called. So let's open this, and I'm gonna right click and paste in our two files that we've been working on. So, okay, let's now pull up our git bash terminal. Okay, so we've got the git bash terminal. Now make sure you've got your virtual environment turned on, and you can tell that because it says vert there. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we set up a virtual environment way back at the beginning of this playlist. You can check a link in the comment section below for the playlist for this KV playlist and check that out. But make sure your virtual environment is turned on because we're gonna install something now that will take care of all of this stuff for us. It's gonna package up our file into an exe and executable file. So uh, to do that, let's go pip install, and this is pi installer. Now I've already got it, so you know it's telling me I've already got it. It will install on your computer and you should be good to go. Now you can confirm that if you want by typing pip freeze, and you can see here's the Pi install installer stuff that's been installed. You can see here's all our Kivi stuff and some other stuff we've installed along the way. So, okay, now let's move into that new directory we just created. So I'm gonna go CD and let's go calc. Okay, and you can see now we're in this calc directory. And if I type LS, you can see here's our two files that we just moved in there. Okay, so to package up our file, this is gonna take several steps. It's gonna take a little while. The first step is to type pi installer in the name of our main Python file, calc.py. And then we also want .w. Otherwise, this will create a blank like DOS screen. Every time we run our program, we don't want that. So this is all we have to do to do this on Windows. Now, if you're on a Mac, the only difference is you need to type dash dash one file, right? So if you're on a Mac, do it like this. If you're on Windows, do it like this. Now I'm on Windows, so from here on out, we're just gonna do this on Windows, but it's basically the same for Mac. Shouldn't have much problem. So this is gonna go through here and it's gonna grab, it's gonna grab our Python file, calc.py, and it's gonna do all kinds of stuff. It's gonna create all kinds of different files and directories, and it's just a, a bunch of stuff. And so we just sort of sit back and wait for it to do its thing. Shouldn't take but a minute or two. Okay, so that just took a few seconds. So now we can come back over to our directory here that we just created. Here's our calc directory and our Kivi GUI directory. And you can see now there's all kinds of other stuff right? And the thing we care about now is this calc.spec file. We need to make some changes, quite a few bit, uh, quite a few changes to this calc.spec file. And the first thing you want to sort of realize is we just packaged up everything for our calc.py file. We made no mention at all about this calc.kv file. And this is probably the most important part of our whole app. It has everything, all of our layout stuff in it. So this hasn't actually been bundled into all of this stuff. And we can tell that we can go to dist calc, and then find the exe file. Here it is, calc.exe. If we double click on it, it this I get an error. It says failed to execute script calc. You couldn't even see it. It was on the other screen. It just crashed. So we need to make some changes to this calc.spec file. So let's head over to Sublime Text and let's go file open and then navigate to our C Kivi GUI directory and then that calc directory. And then let's out, open this calc.spec file. And you can see, 
Uh, it's just a you know a basic spec file. It has some things. Now, one thing to notice: look at this path. It's got this double slashes for paths. That's interesting, and that's something you're going to have to sort of keep in mind. So, okay, there's a bunch of changes we need to make to this file. The first is we need to add some dependencies up here. So let's go from Kivi underscore depths. We want to import SDL2 and glue, right? We don't really know what these are. We don't really care what these are. We just need to put this here. If we don't, this isn't going to work. So that's the first thing we need to do. Now we need to come down here and designate our calc.kv file, right? We need to tell our program, hey, we've got a kv file. We need to include it in here. So I'm um, looking here between this pi z and the exe. So after this, we could just kind of make some space here. And I'm going to go a.datas, right? And then plus equals, and then square bracket, and then parentheses, and then code backslash calc.kv and then a comma, and now quotation marks. And then we just need to put the path to our calc.kv file. So remember these weird double slashes, we have to put that there. And now this is in C slash slash kivi GUI, that's our main directory, slash slash calc, that's the directory we just created. And then calc.kv, that's the name of our file, right? Okay. So then we need to put another comma and then data, all in caps, right? Make sure to close our parentheses and close our square bracket. So, okay, that's good there. Now we need to come down to our call and we need to tell the Py installer to kind of look in a directory and grab all the stuff that it sees, just to make sure. Because, you know, this may work may not work. And we also need to reference these things that we just imported. So we do all that down here in call equals collect. Right after the exe, I'm going to put tree and then parentheses. And then again, C colon slash slash and then kibby gooey slash slash calc slash slash. Right. And then we need a comma after that. And then looking through here, we've got our binaries, our zip files, our datas. After datas, and before this equals to thing here, we need to add one more thing. We need to go star, square bracket, tree, and then parentheses p, and then for p in, more parentheses, sdl2 dot dep, underscore bins plus glue dot dep underscore bins and then a comma after it. So basically all of this stuff. Okay, so let's see. I think that's good. Yeah, that should be good. So, okay, we've made this change, right? Go ahead and save this file. Now we need to head back over to the terminal and sort of recompile all this stuff. Uh, just basically say, hey, look at that spec file and update accordingly, right? So to do that, we just type pi installer and then calc dot spec. And then we need to give this a dash y flag. This will delete all the stuff that we've already done. So inside of here, we've got, you know, all of this stuff, right? It can't override those things. It needs to delete them and make them again. So that dash Y gives it permission to do that. It says, yes, go ahead and delete those things. And this is calc spec because that's the name of that file we just modified right here, calc.spec, right? So go ahead and hit run on this. And this should just take a second. It should be quicker than the last one, unless there's errors. Okay, so it looks like it was completed successfully and we're good to go. So let's head over here and we could test this out. We could go to our dist that stands for distribution directory and then calc and then scroll down here and look for our calc.exe, double click it. And if it worked, it should pop up and it sure enough, it did eight times nine equals 72 minus two equals 0. 0.0. Go back. All right. And it seems to work. And we've got our little icon. It's added because we did the tree thing and uh, very cool. So that's all there is to it. A little complicated, a little convoluted, but not too bad. Now you're going to ask yourself, hey, 
there's a lot of stuff here. How do I share this with my friends or something, right? Well, like I said, there's a way that you can make this all into one EXE file, but it's super complicated and we're not gonna talk about it in this video. It's kind of finicky and it doesn't always work anyway. So this is probably the better way to do it. But to share this now, we could come over here to our calc directory, right? Inside of here, it has all of our stuff. And we can just sort of, I just press my mouse button and drag this up, or you can hit control A on your keyboard to highlight all this stuff. And let's just right click and let's go send to compressed zip folder. So I'm gonna zip this all up into one big folder, right? And here it is, calc.zip. You can call it anything you want, rename it if you want. So now we can go ahead and cut this and say I shared this with a friend, right? I emailed it to them, I dropboxed it to them, however you want, they downloaded it from my website, and then they saved it on their computer. I'm gonna save this in a folder called uh, My Calc, I guess. And so let's right click and paste in that zip file that we just zipped all up. Now this is one file, right? So you can send this to people or whatever. Now to open this, they would just double click it, and they come up here to extract all. And when they do, this pops up. It says, where do we want to extract all those files? Uh, I'll just keep it in my calc slash calc. So, or we could just do it like this, I suppose. Just do it in the my calc directory, whatever you want. Extract these things anywhere you want. And when you do, this box pops up. It's, it's unzipping that file. And now when we go back to C slash my calc, now all those files are there, including this calc.zip. Now we can delete this if we wanted to or just keep it or whatever. So now you can instruct your people to click on the disk folder and then the calc folder and then find calc.exe and double click it. And you're good to go. If you wanna be really sort of uh, sneaky, I suppose you could maybe try creating a shortcut before you zipped all these up and then cutting it and then pasting it right here calc.exe shortcut, and then zipping all of these files. So then when they unzipped it, it would be sitting right there and you could just click that, and that creates a shortcut. I don't know, maybe you could play around with that, whatever. Uh, but that's all there is to it. So uh, not too difficult to make an exe file for Windows. Like I said, same thing for Mac, you just uh, change that dash dash one file flag at the very beginning, and you should be good to go. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships and pages, $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.